How's it going everybody? My name's Eric and in this video we have a super technical thermal printing tutorial to go over. We're gonna be printing product price labels for jewelry. It's got a price tag on it. It's also got a barcode on that side. This one just has some text. This one we hand wrote it just for comparison for professionalism. By all means you could handwrite labels. That's perfectly fine. Especially if you couldn't get the printer stuff working. But hopefully this tutorial will help someone that's been trying to do this. I have seen products labeled this way at stores and I came home and I kind of reverse engineered how somebody with a small business with small products would want to do it. Jewelry being so small it's kind of in its own class of labeling. It took me some research to figure out exactly like what labels I would use for this instance. That's kind of an idea what we're going to be going over in this video. It's going to be very specific to the type of labels, the type of printer, the type of software that we're going to be using. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already please give the video a thumbs up. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel consider subscribing. If you have any questions at all throughout the video, put them in the comment section below and let's get into the tutorial. First thing you're going to need for this tutorial is a thermal printer and we're going to be using a Dymo 400 series label writer. It will work with a 450, 450 turbo, 400 turbo, and it will also work with a 4XL. I tried experimenting a little bit with a 203 DPI printer. It did not work because the text is going to be so small on these labels. I was only able to get it working smoothly in a easy to teach manner at this time with the Dymo label writers. I'm not a big fan the way that Dymo engineers their printer, but for this specific application of your business, the Dymo 450 is perfectly fine. The second thing you're going to need are the 30299 labels. They are a Dymo Punch labels as you can see right there. I did order the Becky off label. It's like the third party brand off of Amazon. It's an entire roll of 1500 labels and it was $8.99 Amazon Prime. Make sure you get this exact label size. I will put a link to it in the description. It'll just make it a lot easier to follow in a tutorial. When you have the exact label size it will avoid you a lot of frustration. It's really hard to see on here but there are two barbells on each label that you will be printing on peeling off and then sticking on your jewelry so now that you have your printer your labels your computer let's set the labels up with the printer and then go into the computer you got your Dymo label writer, but first thing you're gonna need to do is load the labels. And if you don't do this right, it's gonna be frustrating. You're gonna open that up, take that spool thing, open it completely, take your roll of labels and put it in the spool following that arrow. So the tail end is wrapping around it and going out. Then you're going to take the other end, push it on all of the way and then make sure your label punches are on the left side of the printer then you're going to take the spool of labels open the top drop it in make sure the punches are on the left side of the printer the actual print surface is on the bottom we're going to slide that into the printer you're going to want to make contact right here on the left side and keep that straight so you want it to be shifted all the way to the left if at any time your labels get jammed, you can pull on this lever right here that reduces pressure and then you can pull your labels out that way. And you'll know once your labels are loaded correctly, if you press that front button, it should load exactly one label. That means that punch is lined up correctly with the sensor and you should be good to go. The lining up of labels is not as much of an issue on the Label Writer 400 as much as it is on the Dymo 4XL because there's just so much space for room for error on this machine. You got to make sure you have it really tight, really far to the left, loaded correctly. And that's why I would recommend a smaller, cheaper Dymo 400 series for this specific application of labeling your rings. Now we're gonna go onto the computer and I'm gonna show you guys how to build the label with the Dymo software. Here we are on our Dymo Label Writer software. I'm on a Mac, but you can do this on a Mac or a PC. The software should look the same. We are on Dymo version 8.7.4.23. I'm assuming you already have installed your printer. You've already done some test prints. You have your printer working. You have your software installed. You're going to go here to the drop down, show label types. You're going to go to specialty retail labels, and we're going to pick this price tag 
to up label. So depending on how small your labels are showing up, I would recommend to go down here, jack it up to 400, or if you wanna get real crazy, go to layout, fit to window, and that'll make that barcode super zoomed in for working on it. It just makes it a lot easier. You go to I, it tells you it's the 30299 SKU. That is the correct label that we purchased off of Amazon. The link to that is in the description. We, brought the, we bought the off brand, but that's the Dymo name for it. And if you go to this equal arrow right here, it gives you a couple of templates. This would be text to describe whatever you're trying to label. The other one is a price that you're just trying to put on the product. The next one is a price and a barcode. And the last one is a custom template. And I'll kind of show you guys going through that, how we would edit and do whatever to those templates. If we just print it out as is, it's not very dark at all. I would recommend bolding out that text and then look how much better that looks than that one. And you can really mess with this and find different fonts that you might like better describing your item. So it would be something like silver ring. And if you want this in the center of everything. So if it's something like Tiffany ring, and then you could even put a price on this side for, I don't know how much this is gonna be, 68, 99. Or if you're just labeling something sterling. This is strictly for example, you really have to customize this based on your needs. So I'm gonna show you the test print on these. So that's how that would look like. Don't want to put a crazy amount of text in here. Otherwise, your text is going to get really, really, really small and you're not going to be able to read it as you saw earlier on our prints. For this template, it's pretty self-explanatory. You're just going to put a price. You can do the same thing. You can experiment with bolding versus not bolding or picking a font that you like as creative as there's a little bit of creativity there's not a ton of flexibility in this program but it's it's nice that it has like the dimensions all there for you and kind of scales it for you so this would just be like the price ones barcode one is pretty interesting so you would put a price on one side and then your barcode on the other when you double click on the barcode it gives you some edits that you can do so the symbology is the barcode type and for whatever reason, the only one that will fit on this tiny little barcode is this code two of five. If you try to put a UPC on here, the UPC will not fit. This code two of five would have to be some sort of custom skew for your business. I, I'm not really into barcoding. I, I know there's different languages and I'm not really sure of like point of sales compatibilities. I'm not, I don't really know any of that. That's kind of beyond my knowledge scope right now. So I'm just trying to show how to make these physical barcodes, not really developing an, an entire inventory system. Could same thing, come over here, edit the price. You could put what it is even underneath it, ring or necklace. We're gonna do a test print right here. So that's kind of what that looks like. I have a barcode scanner right here. The barcodes that they do print, they do scan and read. Uh, to me, it sounds like it could be incorporated into an inventory or a point of sale system, but I'm not 100% sure. So if somebody understands that more than I do, please let me know about it in the comments. Last but not least, we're going to look at the custom layout. This one you're going to have to go over here to insert. You're going to have to double click on a text box and kind of put a text box in here. Nothing really fits on these tiny little labels as they should. So I would recommend using the already pre-made three templates up here and kind of tweaking them to your needs that rather than creating a custom one right here. Uh, it's definitely not as customizable as it would be in an Adobe program, but the fact that it is kind of easy for, I think, most people's applications, that is the, that's the reason I'm mainly making this tutorial after doing a uh, couple hours of research. We could do ring, but we'd have to get it lined up at the top, and it kind of puts it there, even though that text box is kind of big. 
it definitely takes some playing with. So I'd have to create another text box with the price if it's like $13.99. And then we're gonna put that text box all the way over here. We're gonna center it to the right. We're gonna center it to the top and we're going to move it over there. So although the text box overfits the label, you can kind of move it around with spaces and with these centering features up here. We're gonna do another one down here, necklace, silver. And we're going to move it, hopefully, to the bottom. And then I'm gonna have to just make this a smaller font. I got it in there, so that's pretty much good enough as it's gonna get. And then I'll show you the custom barcode feature. If you click on that, it allows you to change the barcode size, but for most barcodes, there's a minimum width, which gets really annoying. But as I said earlier, the code 205 allows you to create a smaller barcode. Well, it's not really fitting right here right now. The barcode function's gonna give you problems if you're trying to make it cut in your custom layout, but we'll copy this. We'll create another text box. Our silver necklace will be $23.99 and we'll bring that over here. Make that bottom, make it to the right. And it's a little something something. We're gonna hit print. And as you can see, the, the text is a little bit bigger than it was on the template. It's just something you're gonna have to play with in order to get the label how you want it. Whenever you get it how you want it, that's when you can print as many copies as you want. And you are going to want to go here to save your layout. You can save it as whatever you want. So if you ever need to pull it back up, you can um, go to file, open. You can open your layout and print that in the future. That's pretty much the template and printing portion. Now, now that we have some labels printed, we're gonna put them on our rings. Here is a printed barcode. In order to get the label off, all you do is kind of press down, peel. As you can see, it peels off one of the two barbells. So ironically, this is not a Tiffany ring, but we're going to label it just for demonstration purposes. You push it through about halfway, and then you're going to line those squares up best as possible and that gives you your label that could be used for labeling jewelry for your own knowledge if something is or is not a certain metal there's so many applications that you could kind of think of to use this for different businesses or organization and once that's on there it's on there for good you're not going to be able to temporarily remove it if you want it to come off you've got to pull very hard to get it off, or you could snip it with some scissors. But you could use numbers, you can use words, whatever you wanna to communicate to a potential buyer. I can't even think of all the applications of this because I don't know everybody's needs, but hopefully this was helpful to somebody out there. And I appreciate everyone for watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. If you have any questions about the entire tutorial, put them in the comment section. And if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. If you have any technical problems you wanna see possibly solved by me, let me know about them in the comment section. We'll see if I can figure it out. As you can see over here, it took me a bunch of wasted labels to kind of figure this out. And this was the best, cheapest option way that I could figure out how to do this for like less than a hundred bucks all in with like a printer and with the labels and the software that comes with the Dymo, nothing crazy, but hopefully this will help somebody out there. I, I do appreciate everyone for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.